My name is Kathy Baumgartner Hedrick, and Steve Philippi and I undertook a very large project this year of the 250th anniversary of Palmyra. We have decided to do some oral histories of um, people who lived, have lived in Palmyra. Most of them are over the age of 80 or 85, and we asked them to tell us their story about Palmyra so that we could put together a DVD that you're going to watch now that has the stories of Palmyra based on the people who have lived here. We hope you enjoy it. We've had a fun time doing it, and we think you'll learn a lot about Palmyra and the history of Palmyra through the stories of Palmyra. My name is Gladys Hoover. I was born on August 8, 1919 in Palmyra on 106 East Cherry Street, where I lived all my life until I moved into this home. Okay. Um, I was born on Palmyra Picnic Day. Well, tell us about the Palmyra Picnic. How, was that a tradition in Palmyra? Yes, for many years they would have what they call the Palmyra Picnic Day, and uh, the people from Palmyra would go to the Hershey Park. And I can remember my father and many other people too would go up early with a basket or something, put it on a table, and uh, save your space. Save, save the space. And it was amazing that nobody ever molested anything. And then when later in the morning, we would go and take the rest of our things. They had um, games for children, contests for adults. And um, that was held in, uh, was a, um, oh, um, a ball field okay. where they had the contests. And then in the evening at the uh, band shell, they would award the prizes to the people that had uh, had won contests. About how many people went to this picnic? Oh, I think the whole Palmyra went. Oh, okay. I was the only one and my mother the day that day. <laughs> that day, the day before. Before. Well, that, that was in 1919. What did your father do? My father <clears throat> worked in Landis Shoe Factory, and so did my mother. Okay. But later on, um, I don't know exactly when, I'm lousy on dates, but uh, he got a job as a custodian for the uh, the school, oh. which was where now Interfaith is, Okay. and at that time it was elementary and high school, and I went to that school until I graduated. So but you taught music out of Palmyra, you taught it in the Northern London District, but I think you did some things with music as the years went by in Palmyra, didn't you? I saw, well, during the time I was off when I was having grade, mm -hmm. I substituted in Palmyra. Okay. And uh, I substituted in the elementary, I substituted in high school uh, for um, Mrs. Fry when she. Did she teach? I didn't realize that she taught in the, in the school. Yes. Oh. Now, do. Do I remember correctly, did you have something to do with the Palmyra Chorus, the community chorus? I, well, yes, when I retired, I decided I was going to go, and Mrs. Cabela had the choir, and uh, I went in to sing, but at the same time, B. Shirk, who was a accompanist, decided to retire from that, so instead of singing, I ended up uh, playing the piano for them. Did you get involved in uh, church or community activities? Well, when I was a kid, a teenager, I um, started singing in the choir in my church. And uh, then uh, our organist, I, that was when I was, I guess when I was in college, my or organist decided to retire and they asked me, and I was taking organ at that time at school, mm -hmm. so they asked me if I would be the organist. So I ended up as the organist and I ended up then later as the choir director. Okay. And uh, so I had the senior choir and I decided I was going to organize other choirs, so I organized a um, a young, a youth choir mm -hmm. was really great, and um, 
So that went real well and finally I thought, well then we need one for the children. So I organized a children's, small children's choir. So I had three choirs and the organ job. Oh, and I yes. did that for about 25 years. Well, you've had some exciting experiences through yeah. music in your lifetime, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, I did. But it sounds to me, as we've been talking, that you've had an influence on a lot of people in Palmyra from the time they were little, because you worked with the little children in your church. Well, I hope it was good. <laughs> and well, but good or bad, I, it was, it was, you definitely were an influence, and mm -hmm. people uh, will recall you. If I were asking them, those people, you know, their memories of Palmyra, and I, I would think you would be in them. It's a delight to me to meet people who say, you were my school teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at uh, mm -hmm. the organ recital that our organist had on Sunday. And afterwards, this girl came up, woman came up to me and she said, you were my teacher at Campbelltown. And she told me her last name. I said, oh, sure. I would have never recognized her, but I remember the name. But, but isn't that nice? It as is. the recipient of that, I think that people should do more. I of just that. had a young, a young man. Well, he don't know how. On Sunday, um, I was at a dinner at another church, and he came over to me and he said, "You remember me?" And he gave me his name. I said, "Oh, sure, I remember you." And he was a twin, and he said, "Well, you remember my t brother?" And I said, "Yes, I remember your brother." And it makes me feel good that they they want to talk to me and and uh, introduce themselves as former students. Now you told us earlier you're 91 years old. That's, yep. that's a long time to live in, I in was one location. In August. Yeah. Are you proud of Palmyra? I mean, it, would yes. this have been you chose to live here after when you got right. married? You chose right. to live here. Um, I, ne I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I, Palmyra is, is familiar to me. It's so different. You know, years ago it seemed like you knew everybody, mm -hmm. but not anymore. <laughs> it's grown a lot, hasn't it? Thank you. Thanks for telling us your story. You're Appreciate welcome, that. I'm sure.